Welcome to part five of our live training session here with our Cadillac CTSV. In the last few videos, we've learned the calibration process from doing the idle control tuning, the VE speed density tuning, and then the mass airflow tuning, putting our whole entire calibration file back in the dynamic blend mode so it can freely move between the map and the MAF sensor at any given time the way that GM has intended and designed this ECU to operate within. Now we're going to be doing a check on a day two of our live training session here, making sure that the engine is going to fire up cold, making sure that our base running airflow table values on a cold engine are going to be valid, the engine is going to hold an idle properly. Then we're also going to be taking a look at implementing our end of injection timing based on the camshaft profile that we're working with. We haven't done that in the calibration process yet, so we're gonna make sure that we take care of that here in this video using our Excel spreadsheet calculator that we provided in the training course, just doing the very last bit of checks and the fine tuning within the calibration. So without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check all this out. Welcome back to our live training session here with our Cadillac CTSV. In our last video, we finished off the MAF calibration process. We put the vehicle back into the dynamic blend mode, and we finished up the entire tune going through all the fuel and spark timing calculations, and we know now it's riding between our speed density operation and our mass airflow operation in that dynamic blend. So at idle and part throttle, most of the time it'll be in our speed density VE table for the estimated air mass, and then once we get to the high engine speeds and high engine RPM, it'll be going into at 4,000 RPM, just the way GM has designed this, it'll be going into the mass airflow mode and looking at the air airflow air mass registration from that MAF calibration table. So we know everything's sorted out. Now this is going to be day two. I've let the engine sit overnight, it's bone cold, and we're gonna go and take a look at the cold start and warm up operation, verifying that we have the fuel being reasonable um, so when we fire off, it's not going to be running in the 10 or 11 air fuel. And then we're going to be also verifying that the base running airflow table, where we have our commanded airflow for the idle control, is also going to be reasonable. And it's going to be close enough that it's going to allow the engine to fire off and run. And we took some estimates when we were filling out our base running airflow table. I added some values into that just across the entire table. And then I edited some of the section in the kind of middle of the table around the 110 to 130 degree coolant range in the previous videos when we were letting the engine cool down and firing it up again just to make sure that that was kind of populated so we know in the warm engine state and when the engine sat for maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes we know that's going to be populated this is going to be taking a look at the cold start so things will change on a bone cold engine we're going to find that the fuel as it's being delivered into the engine is going to have poor atomization but having poor atomization that's going to offset some of the torque production of the engine and we need to get that back so we need to make sure that we have enough airflow that's going to allow the engine to fire off and run produce enough engine torque to hold and maintain a desired idle speed and then making sure that the airflow the the air fuel i should say the commanded air fuel is going to be proper and we're going to find that everything's going to run um, the way GM has intended. Now there is one thing that I want to point out here before we go and do anything before we fire up the engine and start to data log. If we go here to engine and we're going to go here into fuel and then we're going to go in here to open loop base we'll find that our open loop EQ ratio table here is going to be of interest if we take a look here and I've mentioned this in the first or second video I'm not sure at this point um, when I talked about it but I was talking previously in a video um, about the coolant temp, so we're seeing coolant temps at the top in this table here versus our manifold pressure. When we install a really large cam on our engine, we're gonna find that we pull much less vacuum. On a stock cam, we might find we're between 35 to maybe 50 kPa in our vacuum registration. So if we're looking here in our table and we fire off the engine between 68, 86, and 50 degrees, we'll find here that it's commanding around 1.0 or stoichiometric after we fired off. That'll be the commanded air fuel. So when we're not in closed loop using our short and long-term fuel trims, it looks at the values that we populate in this table for the reference or commanded air fuel so that it can use that and our fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by air fuel calculation to figure out what the injector pulse width needs to be to deliver into the engine. So in this case, this is where it would normally be. Now in this particular engine, this pulls between 70 to 80 kPa vacuum at idle um, when the engine's warm. So we're gonna find that we're actually right in this range right here and we can see what the commanded air fuel would be or the commanded EQ ratio. This is actually fuel to air, what that value would be. So the higher the number, the richer the mixture. The lower the number, so if we're going below 1.0, that means that we have a leaner mixture. So what we need to do here is evaluate 
looking at this, what the commanded air fuel or the commanded lambda amount is going to be based on what we're finding in here. Let's just run a quick number so we can kind of see what the commanded air fuel would be. Let's assume on a cold engine that we're probably pulling between 75 and 80. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.